What's going on guys? We are back on Pilot Edge, this time learning how to arrive at a Class T airport. So again, the first thing we are going to want to do is define what a Class T airport is, and the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge says that Class T airspace is airspace surrounding those airports that have an operational control tower. So what you're going to find is an ATIS frequency or some other weather frequency, a ground control frequency, and a tower frequency. There is not going to be any sort of clearance at a Class T airport. Of course, you're going to be able to know how to identify if you're in Class D airspace. So to do that, you plug in your airport identifier into AirNav, you come down to the sectional chart section, and if you see the blue dashed circle, then you know that you have Class D airspace. So in this case, Santa Maria is, as well as our destination of San Luis is also Class D airspace. The first call you make to Class D airspace is to the tower. Now this call has to happen while you are still outside of their airspace, so make sure you know the position of your aircraft so you don't accidentally bust the Class D airspace and get a pilot deviation. When calling, you say the four W's of ATC communication, which is who you are calling, who you are, where you are, and what you want. The tower will typically then tell you to enter a certain segment of the traffic pattern for a specific runway, so you have to know your traffic pattern and you have to know the airport layout in order to ensure that you correctly enter their airspace. Also know that them responding to you is your permission to enter the airspace. As long as they don't say remain clear of Class Delta airspace, you're okay to go inside their ring. Now we'll ensure that we're outside of San Luis's airspace, and as soon as we do that, we will call the tower and tell them we're inbound for landing. San Luis Tower, Skyhawk 3096 Bravo is about 10 miles southeast of the field. Inbound, full stop at uh, flying at 3,000. Number 3096 Bravo, San Luis Tower, report a three mile final, runway 29er. We will report three mile final for 29er, that is Skyhawk 3096 Bravo. An important thing to remember is that you are still responsible for collision avoidance. You have to listen for other aircraft calling and figure out their positions from what they say. The tower may help guide you to look for the traffic but you're still primarily responsible to find it. Sears 9 or 6 Bravo traffic inbound from the south, Cessna. Looking for the traffic, and correction on the type, I'm a Cessna Skyhawk as well, sorry if I didn't make that clear, 3 0 9 or 6 Bravo. From there, I was able to maneuver as needed to avoid the traffic, as well as get on that 3 mile final for runway 2 9 that the tower told me to. I had to do a bit of maneuvering to avoid the clouds and maintain my VFR cloud clearance, as this was a VFR flight, not an IFR one. November 9 or 6, Bravo, safe position. About 7 miles southeast of the field, trying to dodge some clouds here. 3096, Bravo. Number 9 or 6, Bravo, Roger, no problem. Number 123, Alpha Bravo, number 1, runway 29, cleared to land. Number 1529, one Alpha Bravo. Number 123, Alpha Bravo, number 2, follow Cessna on a, about a 2 mile left base, runway 29. Following traffic on the left base for 29, 3096, Bravo. Number 906 Bravo, report now in sight. Traffic is in sight, 3096 Bravo. Number 906 Bravo, Roger, runway 29, clear to land. Clear to land 29, 3096 Bravo. You can see how simple the communications really are. They simply tell you something to do, you read it back, and then you do it. It doesn't have to be very stressful, and there's no real reason to get too anxious about it. It's just a casual conversation between pilot and controller. Because of the traffic, I ended up being cleared to land farther out than I originally anticipated. I didn't have to make my three mile final report, as I definitely would have if there had not been any other communication between me and him before that. Remember, you can begin your approach, but you can't actually touch down without a clearance to land. And always make sure that you are on approach for the correct runway. Number 9 or 6 Bravo, turn right or left when able, taxi to parking or in this frequency today. Right or left when able, taxi to parking, stay with you, 3096 Bravo, thank you. Because the field was not very busy, I was allowed to stay on the tower frequency instead of switching over to ground. If that had not been the case, I would have had to contact ground and tell them where I was off the runway and where I wanted to go. And just as ground does when you're establishing contact while departing a Class D airport, they would have given me instructions to go, I would have had to read it back, and then I would have actually done it. Hopefully you feel better about operations in Class D airports. 
If you have any questions still, feel free to leave them in the comment section, and either I or some other pilot will certainly help you out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope it was worthwhile. Please let me know if it was by either leaving a comment, liking, or subscribing. And of course, blue skies and smooth landings.